Hello and welcome. Uh, this is a series I've been doing, um, inspired uh, by, you know, obviously the Google Capture Flag 2018. Uh, but uh, this whole Capture Flag thing was brought to my attention because I subscribed to Live Overflow and uh, John uh, Hammond here, and they both do great videos. I, I recommend checking out their channels. Also, uh, I'm creating scripts for each one of these projects. Uh, I cre I finish and. Um, and uh, they're all on my GitLab, gitlab.com forward slash melex1000 forward slash capital CTF. Uh, and there you can download. And I've made scripts to automate all of this, which we're going to look at here in a moment. Uh, and we're getting into um, this this one here right here, uh, admin UI2, which is a continuation of the previous one. And uh, and I'm going to you know open here. Uh, I actually had to look up some things on this one to, to complete it, uh, and I'm going to walk you through the steps as best I can. So let's go ahead, and I'm just going to go into um, my script folder here from the, that's on my uh, GitLab page. And here I have, or actually this one I might have done myself. It might have been admin UI3 that I had to look up. Anyway, let me go ahead and just run my script here. It's going to dump a binary file takes a little while, strips it, and then gets it. Yes, this one I actually did. Uh, I got some of the way through. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the code. And so this is this is the flag for this project. And I'll go add menu UI. Uh, OK, so here uh, at the beginning, let me first jump down here. We're checking to see if uh, these files exist, because we need these programs uh, to complete this. Uh, this top part here, I was trying to shorten up my code here rather than f do full if-then statements. I was checking if the files exist, and if they don't, then print a message saying to please install GDB and uh, and or uh, binwalk. And uh, exiting out of that, since it's a separate function, wasn't working. So uh, basically, this is just setting it up so that uh, if these fail, I can exit out of the script. That's all that's doing. So this first part's just making sure you have dependencies installed. Again, GDB, which is a uh, the uh, GNU debugger, because uh, we're going to try to debug this binary file. And binwalk, which I've done many tutorials on uh, in the past. Uh, it's for extracting information from binary files. Lots of times binary files have multiple files embedded in them. Uh, binwalk makes it very easy to extract that stuff, especially working with fit firmware and other uh, binary files. So uh, we're getting that binary file. What, I, what we're doing is we are dumping the uh, output. So we have uh, netcat going here, which connects to this server, uh, which was given to us by the uh, by the Google capture flag at this port. Uh, this is wait two seconds, then disconnect. And what we're doing is we're running a command. If you watched the previous one, we're going into option two, then we're going to uh, transverse up out of the directory in uh, and back down into our home directory. And again, the way we do this is uh, we're actually already in uh, a subdirectory of this directory, I believe. So really all we had to do is move up one. Uh, but the reason I back all the way out like this is because that's how I figured it out eventually. Uh, you can't do uh, full paths on this. If you just did, you know, forward slash, like you're in the root directory, it wouldn't find it. But if you uh, move up a level multiple times, uh, as long as you move up enough, it doesn't matter if you go too far, uh, you'll end up in the root directory and then you work your way back down into the home user and then there's the menu application. Uh, uh, let me show you this real quick in case you didn't watch the previous video, which I do recommend. I'm going to go ahead and run this netcat uh, to that server on port 1337, elite, and you get this menu. Option two will allow you to see version information, but all it's really doing here is catting out a file or something along those lines. If I was to put in something gibberish here, it's going to tell us the file doesn't exist. So in the last video, we looked at that, you know, if we uh, go in there and then we uh, like back out, back out, back out, back out, we're going to end up in our root directory. And I showed you how to get into proc self maps should show us information on the current running program. Uh, so I explained that more in detail in the previous video. So that's what we're working with here. And if we go back into my automated script here, basically we're connecting, we're pushing the number two, which is choosing the second option menu, and then enter, because you have to hit enter after putting two. Then we're putting in this code. Uh, Echo is going to automatically put an enter after that. And we're putting that into uh, netcat. And what this is going to do is dump that menu, the binary part of that menu, and we're going to dump it into a temp file here. 
Uh, and uh, because of the way I did this, we actually have, you should be able to just pull the, the binary file and you wouldn't have to run netcat on this. But the reason I'm doing netcat is because when I do it like this, um, you're actually getting, we're running the program, so we're getting the text output from the menu application. Let me show you real quick. So instead of just getting the, the binary from the application when I run it like this, we're going to get the menu at the beginning and the output menu at the end there. Uh, and we can quit out of that. Um, so I'm actually just running binwalk to strip off that beginning and end output from the menu. There's probably a cleaner way to do it, but that's uh, how I ended up doing it. Uh, when you run uh, binwalk, it's going to, we're using the dash E to extract everything uh, from this temp file that we created. Uh, which is going to create a folder called underscore temp dot extracted unless it's already extracted something in which case it adds a number in the middle here uh, but luckily we clean up after this but uh, it's going to give us a binary file uh, b6 dot uh, elf uh, which is um, if we should still be in their folder here if we run file on this it should be our binary executable that we just pulled from the menu and as you can see here it's an elf 64 bit uh, Linux dynamically linked uh, uh, executable file. So we'll go back into our script here. We now have that. We now have that executable. That theoretically, we can run on a Linux machine. Um, but what we're going to do here now is this is the part. This is where we get into parts that uh, I had to look up because I, I don't understand. Uh, if we real quick here were to run strings on this, which is going to remove anything that's a uh, non-ASCII character from this file. It's going to give us all those strings. Uh, again, this is uh, before I stripped it, so you can still, the menu uh, is still there. Actually, the menus options, oh, I guess maybe that's the text from, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, now I'm going to sort unique that just to get rid of any repeated lines, and it puts in alphabetical order, and then we're going to grep dash I uh, means case insensitive, and we're going to look for the word flag. And you can see there's a few options here. And we already found the flag one file, just the flag file from uh, the previous project. Uh, but you can also see there's flags two. And there's also uh, these uh, output here, which are, um, from what I was reading, when you find that, if we went to a hex editor, we can find those two. So if I open up hex edit, and our binary file here, and I tab over, I can then hit forward slash search, and I can search for this, and it's gonna bring us right here, and if you look through that, um, you can see those there, and you're not, I'm not sure if you can tell what they are from there, uh, control C to get out of that, but if we run GDB, uh, the GNU debugger, let me up our font size here a little bit, uh, and we point it towards that file, uh, let, me, let me double check, my script here. That's okay. We actually want to run it like this. What we're doing here is we're saying to run on this file, the B6 file, which is our binary file, and we're grabbing this that we saw in the strings, which is a um, global variable. So let me just go ahead and run that manually, like so. And it's going to give us this output saying that it equals this, which is actually our flag with a little extra data here. Uh, I guess there was no null character uh, in there to prevent us from continuing on to the next thing. So like when you're pulling stuff from a binary file, uh, there's there's a lot of null files, not a lot of null characters. So if we go back into hex edit here and into our binary file here, you can see uh, all these what look like periods, but most of them are not. If they represent it as zeros on this side, that means they're null characters. And um, a null character basically tells you to stop. I've done videos on this in the past. Basically, you can modify uh, plain text strings in a binary file, uh, as long as you go, don't go past that null character. Sometimes you do and it corrupts the file, and sometimes you uh, do and it just continues on into another variable. Um, so basically what we have here, when we run this, is this is what that equals, but for some reason it continued on to uh, the next part of the code. So really we can strip that off, which my code does. And then we're left with this code here, which is our flag, but it needs to be converted uh, into ASCII characters. And again, this is uh, something I found online. I tried to manually do it and I wasn't really getting it, uh, but we're running a Python uh, command here. 
So I'm actually dumping this command into a Python script, which I should be able to run without dumping into a script. But I put it in there, and then I run that script as Python. And what that's going to do is take the output of this, which we were just looking at, and convert it to ASCII characters. So um, basically, the I'm going to try to explain this as best I can. Uh, dot join. So if we didn't do dot join, we're going to get this as an array. Um, so basically, it's going to show each character as uh, a separate item in the array. So you'd get each character in quotations with a comma next to it. Join is just going to basically remove that and put them all as one string. So char is going to convert this back into a character, which is what we want, but we can't do it directly. What we're using is uh, this function here uh, to convert octal uh, into, um, uh, I'm not going to pretend like I remember what all this does, but basically we're taking an integer number uh, that's an octal. I don't know how this information is figured out, so I apologize for that. I'm trying to explain, uh, again, this this uh, flag uh, was a little, little bit, uh, this part was all me, and then we get to this, these two lines here, and that was stuff I had to look up, so I'm going to try to explain as best I can. Uh, so again, you can see that we have uh, the parentheses here, which is uh, the square brackets, which is saying this is uh, an array, which we're joining here, but we're taking the output of the password that we got, and we're going to be um, putting it into here, each character, uh, and then we're going to convert it uh, from or to octal. Uh, okay, I'm done explaining that. I don't want to go off the wrong way. Basically, this is a Python command that's going to basically take what we have, convert it, convert it again, paste it all together. Is basically what it's doing. Uh, and then I do a little cleanup of removing that script at the end, which gets us, if we run my script, okay, just, oh, just as I find it, I clear it out. There we go. So it's dumping the binary from the server, then it's stripping it, and then we get our output here. Um, so from the global variable this. So again, if I was to take this code here and actually remove that slash bin sh, and uh, I'm gonna cat out my script here just to show you a little more detail on what's happening. I'm gonna take this, okay? That's good. I'm gonna recreate our Python script here, and then I'm going to take the output that the debugger gave us, minus that bin sh, and I'm going to go into our tep here, and where I have this, I'm going to paste in what we got. Oops. And if we Python out that file, we get our code here, but let me let me backwards that a little bit. Again, if I remove the join function here, uh, and basically I think if I remove all this, I was doing playing around with this yesterday, trying to understand it more. I think that this will work. There we go. So there is without that join function, we get an array here with with our flag. Uh, but every, each character is separated into a different item in that array. So the join's basically just sticking all that together as a single string. So I hope that explains that part a little bit more. And again, if we were to go into uh, Python and type in char and give it uh, a number like 65, or actually char is not defined. Oh, I think it's, there we go, 65. That gives us an A. So it's basically taking the numeric output, uh, uh, the, um, the uh, and converting it to ASCII. So if we go back into our script here, or even just look at it up here, um, so this X is being put in there from what we're getting over here. But at first, we're converting it here. And I'm trying to explain something that's above my head, and I shouldn't be doing that. I hope I cleared that up a little bit or made it more confusing. <laughs> anyway, you can pick that apart. If you understand that that last little part a little bit better than me, like I get the general concept. I just can't really explain it, so I obviously don't know it that well. Be sure to comment below, and I appreciate it. I hope this uh, cleared. If you didn't understand this, this um, little project here at all, I hope I cleared it up a little bit.
go ahead and download my code and look at it. I feel bad that I, I can't explain that last little bit better. But anyway, I do thank you for watching. Uh, and hopefully uh, the rest of the videos in this series are a little better than this one. Again, we're going to go into Admin UI 3 next, which again, I can't remember that one off the top of my head. I did it yesterday. I don't want to be overhead, but then there's a few others that I can explain a little bit better. As always, uh, thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description. As always, I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.